Hello everyone, all right, I got a uh, interesting video if you are a firefighter and would like to get a job done here in Antarctica. I am gonna sh be showing you the Antarctic Fire Department. We're gonna talk to Captain, uh, the fire captain, and then he's gonna tell you a little bit about the job Then we'll do a little walk around, show you some of the different vehicles and explain kind of what's going on and kind of the differences between being a firefighter here and being a firefighter back stateside. Hope you enjoy. So uh, we're in here now and uh, I'm gonna be uh, asking uh, Captain Sergeant a couple questions. Um, what are some of your guys' responsibilities and how is it different between here and stateside? Um, obviously there are some unique challenges to being a firefighter in Antarctica, um, especially this time of year in the winter. We have a staff of 11 firefighters and for us there's no mutual aid uh, like there is back home. So. Back home, you have a bad fire. You can call in surrounding departments and get help. We don't have that luxury. So there's 11 of us to do the job, no matter how big it is. Um, so that's one of the big differences. Obviously, there's challenges with the temperatures, whether you're talking summer or winter. It, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to do anything with water and sub-freezing temperatures. So those are the, the two biggest. So what's the difference between working in the winter here and then the, the summer in Antarctica? One of the biggest differences is um, our staffing levels. So again, in the winter, I have. 11 firefighters in the summer we'll have a, a close to 50. Um, in the summer we also uh, put firefighters at the South Pole Station. We send seven uh, down there to staff the South Pole to cover flights there. We have a, a second station that's open only in the summer out at Williams Field that covers the skiway for all of the LC-130s coming in and out mm -hmm. and then we still provide town coverage. Uh, on top of that, whenever we get a flight at Phoenix, we also have to send eight firefighters there. So our staffing needs are a lot greater. There's a lot more going on in the summer. We tend to stay uh, busier with flights and those things. Winter is more of a time for us to catch up on winter tasking and maintenance and, and do some of the things that you don't have time to do in summer. So a lot of our inventory is done in winter, testing of, ve of vehicles and equipment, uh, testing of hydrants, all that's done in the winter. So working in Antarctica, obviously you can't go anywhere else. What's your schedule like here? What type of hours do you have working down here? One of the, the unique things for us is we, our firefighters work 24 on, 24 off with a Kelly day every two weeks. So basically that Kelly day means um, every two weeks they have a stretch of three days off. Um, it is a little bit more demanding here. Um, as, whereas home you see departments work in 2448s, 2472s, and we don't do that. Our, our manpower needs are too great for that and so so and also with the fire department um, you cover other services as well right so there's no hospitals and stuff like well there's no I should say specific EMTs only here correct right, right. what what do you um, in order to come here you have to be an EMT as far as on the fire department um, all of our firefighters are trained at, at either the EMT or paramedic level so we also provide EMS services. So you respond to calls, right? You take the ambulance or whatever you need, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any, any, any call here gets both an engine and an ambulance. Yep. So we always have the EMS equipment on site. Thankfully, we do have the McMurdo General Hospital. We have a great relationship with them. So, so we will integrate well with them and we can be there quick from pretty much anywhere out on station. So obviously being down here in Antarctica, there's different equipment and which probably no one really knows about, honestly. I mean, unless they look it up or they know somebody who's been down here. What type of equipment uh, you use down here is different and I don't know, perhaps you use like a different type of firefighting um, uh, agent down here as well? Uh, to start with on the engines, um, our, this engine is built on what's called an ARF chassis, which is an aircraft rescue firefighting chassis. So it's bigger, it's not, uh, it sits higher than most structural trucks back home. And another unique aspect of, of our engines is they're heat traced. So we have a heater on the tank and pump compartment as well as heat tracing on all the discharges and intakes that, that keep everything from freezing. So that's, that's one of the, the big differences as far as our in-town stuff. As far as our aircraft equipment, we don't have any of the normal equipment that you'd see at, at an airport, for instance. Our vehicles are very unique. Um, for one, 
We have Renegades, which are F-550s with a fire package built onto them that carry firefighting uh, foam and dry, dry chem. Um, they're a tracked vehicle, so they're a little bit slower. Um, they're, they're actually the, the faster of our ARF equipment. Um, but we, we, you, don't, you won't ever see us going high speed in any, any of our airfield equipment. Past that, we have the Chieftains, which were made by Canadian Foremost back in the 80s. They're a huge track vehicle. They're slow, but they carry a lot of agent in most of our equipment. Um, and then we have sleds, which are pulled behind tractors. We have either the uh, case challengers or the quad tracks down here that we pull the sleds with. And um, those sleds um, are, are literally that. They're a sled with a firefighting package built in that uh, are fueled by a pump and compressed air. And that's, um, that's some of the unique things about our equipment. Sweet. All right, so he explained his job and kind of some of the unique equipment around here. And we're going to take a look. Uh, he's going to give us a little tour about um, their station and kind of show you what is um, around and you know living facilities etc. All right, let's uh, do a quick tour. We're not going to go upstairs and show the bunks because it's literally just bunks up there, and there's someone up there, so I don't want to disturb them. Um, but yeah, all right, here we go. Hello, Wes. How are you? What's going on, man? This is the, uh, what's this, what we got going on here? We got the dispatch area, right? Yeah. So dispatch center for all of McMurdo. Yep. Pretty much any off-continent call or anything like that comes through here. Cool. Sweet. And then also dispatching calls, obviously, and spills, and pretty much everything comes through here. So you get all the stuff, right, Wes? <laughs> all the calls. <laughs> Sweet. So this is the heart and soul, I guess, or of the life-saving area, I guess, mainly. Cool. I can live with that. I radios. What's up? Yo. So, this is our training room. This is cool. where we do all of our training, uh, continuing education, and meetings. So, pretty normal for a standard yep. station, I guess, right? Yep. Bunch of radios, of course. Use these to, uh, Obviously, take them out when you leave, yep. right? For calls and everything. Sweet. Oops, yeah. So, you also have a grill out here. They grill stuff in the summer and in the winter. Yeah. We just had some, uh, we had some uh, flank steak a couple weeks ago. So, it's uh, another thing to enjoy being here. 